Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Free Press Community Reviews weekly video update. My name is John Kendall. I am the editor of the Free Press Community Review, and I am joined today by Cody Seller of the West edition of the Free Press Community Review to talk about the issue of November 30th. And Cody, you've got a, a couple of quite interesting stories. Um, in the paper this week uh, and more than a couple but uh, the two that i wanted to talk about um were uh the organization known as one just city uh has appointed uh, a new executive director and uh we also want to talk about an award-winning poet from headingley so uh let's start with uh one just city and uh, first of all, can you explain uh, for our readers and our viewers uh, what One Just City is, uh, what its mission is, and about its new, tell us about its new executive director. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so One, uh, One Just City is uh, kind of a, a community organization. They've got uh, drop-in centers around the Winnipeg, I think, three um, in Osborne, West Broadway in the West End, I believe um and uh so they you know they just uh they have all sorts of uh supports they have you know they offer meals um they offer uh during the the winter under the program uh just a warm sleep uh they offer a place to sleep to get out of the the cold there's no uh, uh it's important to them uh it seems to to make it you know there's no restrictions people can bring in their dogs if they have them um that sort of thing. They're not, uh, as in with other shelters, they're not required to be clean. Um, so it's, uh, you know, um, making sure that people have, uh, you know, no, a, a place to sleep in, you know, Winnipeg winter, which is very important, no matter what the situation. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So this is a, an example of what uh, we've heard talked about by people when discussing the issue of homelessness. This is a, a low barrier uh, shelter yes. in, in that yeah. there's no um there's no religious tenets that are uh the un foundational underpinning of it uh, there's no requirement to be clean and sober you can bring your dog we all know that many people who are unhoused uh do have canine companions uh and things of that nature okay what else does does one just city do and uh um well uh you know that's the uh that's the the crux of it it's lots of you know food and then kind of uh sort of holistic services right um they just kind of you know, a lot of these centers it's just they kind of just uh, suss out what the need is and you know they've got uh, uh I, I you know i think once a week something like that um they've got oh wait maybe i'm thinking of they have a partnership with the oak table i believe on, on pulpit i was thinking they have healthcare supports that come in there um, they've got, um, you know, monthly food kits, emergency food kits, um, you know, uh, drop in. They've got uh, small programming uh, They're, You know, they are hoping to under the new uh, new ED. Well, we can talk about that. Uh, add more indigenous led programming uh, and things like that. But uh, right now that doesn't really have uh, a form as well. As far as I understand it, that's kind of. They want to bring in the consultants and, and you know and, and not uh, not try to mold it to their own design but allow it to, uh, you know just kind of support what what it will be okay fair sense. enough yeah. yeah it does yeah. uh now tell us uh about the new executive director she was the the reason you wrote the story um which is a, a mini profile of one just city and of course uh a way of introducing her to uh to our readership who's uh glennis quinn what's her background what what are her aims all right. Uh, well, uh, Glynis Quinn uh, what is well now the new uh, executive director of uh, One Just City. Um, so she's taking over for uh, Tessa Blakey Whitecloud, who uh, took over the the CEO position at uh, Silo Mission. Silo Mission. Um, so Glynis stepped in in a te in a temporary basis. She was already working for for uh, One Just City. Um, that was, and she stepped in on a temporary basis when. Uh, Tessa Blakey uh, White Cloud left um, the organization, I believe, uh, in 2021. Yeah, yeah, in 2021 in November, I believe. Um, and uh, and yeah, so she took that over. 
uh, but wasn't ever sure if she was, uh, you know, going to stay. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, just recently that, um, you know, the, the term, the one year term was up. She was, uh, wasn't sure. And she, you know, decided to, to stay on. They decided to hire her permanently. And uh, yeah, now that's, uh, that's where she is. So I know she was talking about, uh, I mean, you can imagine uh, kind of being in a, in a position like that in a term position, it kind of puts you in a strange, strange spot. Uh, you know, uh, when you're when you're trying to create policy, make uh, organizational changes, uh, when you're not sure if you're going to be there to see them out. Um, I think, uh, you know, I got the impression that she felt a little handcuffed by that and understandably so. Uh, so she seemed uh, really excited to get going. Well, good. Um, she's, yeah. Yeah. One would think that uh, that. Uh, the wish list uh, of someone in a term position uh, becomes an action plan um, yeah. after um, you know the term position is is transformed uh, into uh, a, a permanent job as an executive director. Well, congrat congratulations to uh, to Glynis, and uh, I am curious to see how One Just City evolves and evolves its programming under her stewardship. So uh, thanks for telling us about that. Um, Let's uh, uh, turn the page, if you will. Um, sorry for the dad joke, uh, and talk about uh, Shelley Ringland, uh, uh, a poet from Headingley, and uh, tell us more about her. Uh, what brought her to our attention, and uh, what she had to tell you about her her work, uh, etc. Yeah. Uh, so Shelley Ringland. Uh... As you said, she's a Headingley resident, um, and uh, you know that's uh, that's part of our bread and butter. We love to see what uh, you know people are doing in our in our uh, coverage areas. Um, and uh, she was uh, longlisted for the CBC Poetry Prize. Um, you know, she's uh, she's an amateur uh, poet, so you know she's kind of going up against uh, against some people with uh, maybe a, uh, a longer resume in the field. We'll say. Um, and uh, so, you know, it, it's it's long list, you know, she made the long list. But for her, she said uh, that just, you know, that was that was like winning, winning the prize for her. Oh, that sure. was, uh, <laughs> you know, that was a, a, a big something. And I think, you know, I think that uh, doubly so because it was such a personal poem that mm -hmm. she w was uh, long listed for. Uh, it's called The Long Goodbye a Triptych, which I, I had to. Uh, look up that word, uh, but uh, basically, it just kind of means in three parts. Um, and uh, I was an uh, honors English student. I know. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, we weren't all John. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so it's written in uh, in three parts, and it kind of goes through a progression uh, of a real life situation with uh, her mother uh, and her mother's progression through uh, dementia. And, uh, you know, from, you know, dementia through the tougher, like the tougher years of it and to the, you know, uh, after the passing as well. Yeah. And there's uh, a, I just, there's a, you quote um, the first line uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the first lines of, of the triptych and, uh, you know, my mother is in a prison with no bars uh, that essentially frames um everything uh, and immediately uh, it's a stunning image and immediately brings you into the mood of what this was so i can understand how uh um a jury um of uh people assessing entries could uh immediately be drawn in by something like that and uh so as you say, Shelley's reaction is uh, it's almost like winning. Um, there is a small prize uh, for this. It's about six thousand dollars, I think, in terms of prize money from the Canada Council for the Arts and the opportunity uh, for uh, the winning poet to go on a two week writing resin uh, residency at the Banff Centre for the Arts. Um, yeah. What uh, uh, what are Shelley's am ambitions with respect to poetry? Has this fired her up? <laughs> Or is this something whereby she said, I just did it, but I'm not a poet? Yeah, um, well, you know what? I think she definitely seems to 
feel herself as a poet, but uh, she seemed to also view herself very much in the realm of amateur poet. Uh, I, I didn't uh, I didn't get the feeling that she had um, that she had great aspirations, but I did get the feeling that it was, uh, you know, uh, being such a raw poem that it was uh, something that was very validating 